In ancient Rome, during the reign of Emperor Tiberius, there lived a man known for his kindness and integrity. He had two sons who brought him great pride. One was a soldier and the other a poet. The elder son joined the army and was sent to the empire's remote regions, where he served with courage and honor. The younger son, with his poetic talent, enchanted Rome with his beautiful verses, recited in the squares and at banquets. On a quiet night, while the old man slept deeply in his modest home, he was granted a heavenly vision. An angel of indescribable beauty appeared before him, wrapped in a soft, radiant light that filled the entire space with a sense of peace and holiness. With a melodious and serene voice, the angel addressed the old man, saying, Righteous and kind man, began the angel, I have a message for you. The words of one of your sons will be known and repeated throughout the world, crossing time and echoing in future generations. The angel explained that this destiny was not a result of chance, but of the love, faith and justice the old man had sown in his family. The old man, with a heart full of gratitude and tears in his eyes, felt a profound peace upon hearing these words. Upon awakening, the old man was deeply moved. He thanked life for this revelation, crying with happiness, knowing he had raised worthy and talented children and that life held a grand destiny for them. One afternoon, while strolling through the bustling streets of Rome, the old man witnessed a scene that chilled his heart. A runaway carriage sped down a steep street, with the horses in panic and the coachman unable to control them. In the path of the carriage, a distracted child played, unaware of the imminent danger. Without hesitation, the old man ran with all his strength, his years and frailty disappearing in the urgency of the situation. With one final effort, he reached the child and pushed him to the safety of the sidewalk, but he didn't have time to save himself. The heavy carriage wheels passed over his body and he fell to the ground gravely injured. With the shocked and tearful crowd around him, the old man smiled serenely, knowing his life had been exchanged for the child's. His last breath was marked by the peace of a man who had fulfilled his final act of kindness and courage. His life had been marked by righteous actions and a kind heart, and thus he was received directly into heaven, where he reunited with the angel from his dream. You were a good man, said the angel to him. You lived your life with love and died with dignity. I can now grant any wish you may have. The old man smiled with humility, gratitude and replied, Life has been good to me too, he replied. When you appeared in my dream, I felt that all my efforts were justified because my poet's son's verses will endure among men for centuries to come. I have nothing to ask for myself. However, every father would be proud to see the fame of someone he nurtured as a child and educated as a youth. I would like to see, in the distant future, my son's words being spoken by thousands of people. The angel touched the old man's shoulder, gave a smile, and the two were transported to a distant future. Around them appeared an immense place, with thousands of people speaking a strange language. The old man cried with joy, feeling an indescribable emotion. I knew my son poet's verses were good and immortal, he said to the angel, tears in his eyes. I would like you to tell me which of his poems these people are repeating. The angel, with a tender look, smiled once again, sat beside the old man, and began to explain, Your son, poet's verses, were very popular in Rome, said the angel. Everyone enjoyed and amused themselves with them, but when Emperor Tiberius's reign ended, his verses were also forgotten. The words these people are repeating are from your soldier son who joined the army. The old man looked surprised at the angel, not fully comprehending. Your son went to serve in a distant place and became a centurion. 
He was also a righteous and good man. As an officer, he commanded a sentry composed of about 80 to 100 soldiers, which meant he not only possessed exceptional military skills, but also demonstrated leadership, discipline, and loyalty to the empire. He was different from many other Roman officers, who often treated the locals with disdain and cruelty. Your son showed incredible sensitivity and respect for the traditions and faith of the Jews. He was considered a benefactor, even building a synagogue for the Jews in the region, a rare and significant gesture that highlighted his empathy and generosity. Similarly, he was known for his genuine concern for those under his command, including his servants. Among these servants, there was one in particular who was extremely dear to him. This servant was a young man who, according to reports, was gravely ill. The servant's condition was critical, and he suffered intensely on the verge of death. Your son's anguish was palpable, as he saw in the young man more than just a servant. He considered him almost like a family member, a dear friend. Desperate to find a cure for his servant, the centurion heard of a rabbi whose miraculous feats were quickly becoming known throughout Galilee and beyond. Although your son was a Gentile, not born into the Jewish faith, he set out in search of this man who might be able to save his friend servant. During his journey, he discovered that the man he was seeking was Jesus, the Son of God. He met other people who had been healed by him, learned his teachings, and even as a Roman centurion, converted to his faith. Finally, after much searching, one morning in Capernaum, your son found the rabbi he had been searching for. He told Jesus that he had a sick servant and only a miracle could save him. Jesus, after hearing his entire story, offered to go to his house. But the centurion, your son, was a man of faith, and looking into the rabbi's eyes, he understood that he was in the presence of the Son of God. It was then that he said the words that were never forgotten, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word, and my servant will be healed. Matthew chapter 8 verse 8 The old man was in tears, but they were tears of deep pride and joy. These words resonated deeply with the essence of faith. The centurion recognized Jesus' authority so clearly and convincingly that he believed a simple word from Jesus would suffice to perform the healing. He understood hierarchy and obedience from his own experience and saw in Jesus a higher divine authority. Jesus, amazed by the centurion's faith, declared, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. Matthew chapter 8 verse 10. Jesus then spoke the healing word, and the centurion's servant was healed instantly without Jesus needing to be physically present. This miracle not only saved the servant's life, but also served as a powerful testimony to the unwavering faith of a Gentile and Jesus' universal compassion, transcending cultural and religious barriers to touch the lives of those who believed in him with pure hearts. The story of the centurion and the healing of his servant is a powerful narrative about faith, humility, and the ability to recognize divine authority, regardless of cultural or social barriers. It highlights the universality of Jesus' message, showing that true faith can come from anywhere, and that Jesus' compassion and healing power are available to all who believe. The old man understood that the true greatness of his sons lay not only in the deeds he had imagined, but in the faith and kindness one of them had shown, words that transcended time and echoed through eternity. The words the old man witnessed thousands of people repeating in a strange language were the words spoken by his son to Jesus. Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word, and my servant will be healed. In the Christian tradition, this phrase holds special and eternal significance. It is often repeated in liturgies and prayers, especially during the celebration of the Eucharist. The faithful recite it as an acknowledgement of their own unworthiness and total dependence on the grace and mercy of God. 
the centurion's humility, who did not consider himself worthy of Jesus' presence, and his unwavering faith in the power of a simple word from Jesus are examples we can follow in our lives. We should ask ourselves if we are truly trusting in Jesus' authority in our everyday situations, and if we are approaching him with the same humility and confidence. This was today's video, and I hope to have added good teachings to your hearts. Remember to subscribe to the channel, click like, and leave a comment telling us where you're watching from. Hugs, and stay with God.